In under five minutes, I wanna to explain to you how to program your UV5R, how to find repeaters, how to make sure that it's unlocked, and how to make sure that this radio is ready in the event of an emergency. Uh, a lot of people hate this radio, but the fact of the matter is uh, this radio saves a good amount of lives, and right now it's like $18 on Amazon, so it would be foolish not to pick this up. And on top of that, the battery lasts forever. So you could keep it in a drawer for a month and it'll be perfectly fine. All right, so all that you need is your radio. You need your programming cable. Make sure your radio is charged to at least 50%. You can verify that by turning it on. There's a little battery indicator here. If you have two bars, you are golden. You're probably okay with one bar, but let's not risk it. And then you need a computer. In my case, I have my Dell Toughbook. Uh, it's a Windows operating system. You can use Linux or you can use Mac. Everything's fine. But for the sake of this tutorial, we are only doing Windows. Basically the same thing. So as far as programs, you're going to need to download Chirp. Chirp is a program that interfaces with the Beofeng radios and it just works really well. You plug everything you want in this program, you click sync to radio and it will just work. So I'll link Chirp down in the description so you don't have to look for it. Or if you want, you can just Google Chirp for Beofeng programming and it'll come up. Uh, chirpmyradio.com is the link. You can click here, download the latest version of Chirp and then Chirp Next 2024 1020 or whatever the latest update is. Install it. I recommend installing it with admin privileges. The way that works is once it's downloaded, go into your downloads folder. You see Chirp right here. Right click, run as admin, and install the program. I'm not going to go through that. Fairly simple and straightforward. At this point, we can open up the program and we will be greeted with this little welcome interface. We are going to then plug our cable into our computer and connect it into a radio. What we want to do is unlock your radio. The reason why we want to unlock your radio is although technically it is illegal in the event of an emergency, we want you to have every advantage that you possibly can to make a contact with somebody who is in need or if you need to reach out to somebody because you're in need. So in order to do that, you have to keep your radio off. You have to hold down the monitor button, the power button, and the VFO slash MR button all at the same time. Press them down, hold this button, and then turn it on. You will have an option at that point to, it will say factory or something along those lines, and you just have to confirm it. So as simple as that, if you have any questions with that, you can just YouTube how to unlock Beofeng UV5R and they'll go over any troubleshooting steps. The reason why I can't do it or demonstrate it here is because this is an older Beofeng. It came factory unlocked, so it doesn't have the same example, but fairly straightforward. Okay, next, at this point, we wanna go and download the base image from our radio into the Chirp application. To do that, we need to first find out what COM port, communication port, is this USB right here? So we wanna go on our computer, type in device manager. This is your best friend when programming radios. And look for ports, COM, and LPT. Here we have USB serial channel 340 COM 12. Great. Now in Chirp, we wanna do radio, download from radio. We wanna do, from this dropdown, COM 12. Vendor, Beofeng model UV. 5R, it's gonna tell you blah, 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 not important, yes, and click okay. At this point, it's cloning the radio, it's doing some beeping and lighting on the radio itself, and soon we'll have our whole uh, image here. So my image is gonna have things pre-programmed in it already, you don't worry about it, yours is gonna be pretty clear, and for this sake, I'm actually gonna delete everything. Clean slate, just like you. You might have a frequency here. Uh, it's whatever you want to do. Now, the way that I program things is I want my FRS frequencies first. So that's the blister pack walkie-talkie frequencies. So if your neighbor has one of these, you can talk to them. Then I want to add GMRS, which is this radio. More frequencies, higher output, but um, we want to add those frequencies in here. And then we'll add the ham radio uh, repeaters and frequencies at that point. We'll start with the weather. So 
open up file, open stock config, and we're gonna do US FRS GMRS frequencies. Actually, I lied, I'm sorry. First thing we're gonna do is we're gonna install US calling frequency. And we only need two meter and 70 centimeter. So we're gonna delete. The reason why is because this radio is only capable of doing two meter and 70 centimeters. We're gonna shift this up right there. Next, we wanna install or add the weather frequencies. So we're gonna do open stock config, US NOAA weather alert. We're gonna copy them and I lied, I'm sorry. So this opens up different tabs. So we're gonna take these two, we're gonna copy them or cut them. We're gonna go into our base image and we're gonna paste them right here. Next, we're gonna copy it and we will paste it here. So now we have our frequencies for calling. We have our wedding, uh, weather and calling frequencies are basically pre-established frequencies in the amateur radio uh, hobby that says, hey, if there's ever somebody you want to talk to, this is a great channel to start. And in case of an emergency, this is a wonderful channel to listen into or to transmit on because a lot of ham radio operators will be looking here. All right, once we have the weather and the calling frequency in, we want to add our FRS and GMRS frequencies. So they're right here. We'll start with FRS1 and work our way all the way over here. So there's a lot of them, they're redundant. Some of them have offsets. That's because some of them are repeaters. So we're still gonna copy all of them over. Once again, this is a base installation, meaning that we wanna have as much as possible in here. That way, if you ever need it, it's available to you. Later on, we're gonna cover in a different video uh, how to reach out to somebody in an emergency when you should transmit. It's the 333 rule, basically channel three every three hours for three minutes. Um, but we'll talk about that later. So now we have our calling frequency, we have our weather, we have FRS, GMRS, and now we are ready to install some repeaters. This point, we will see if there's anything else in the stock config that we could use. You could add MERS, Marine, all this stuff uh, up to you. I don't do it because I don't really see a benefit to it. We wanna go query source under the radio, repeater book. And now at this point, we wanna find your country, the service. So if you wanna add GMRS repeaters, that's how you do it. Um, in this case, I'll just add amateur radio. Pick your state, I'm in New Jersey. Uh, latitude, all this, we can easily get that by going to maps.google.com. Find your location. Well, if it loads up. And we're gonna do this. Copy the clipboard. Got that. Negative. You paste your latitude, your long longitude, and the way you do that is on Google Maps, you just right click uh, general location, and it's right there. This point distance, we wanna do, uh, let's get a little aggressive, 50 kilometers. Uh, filter, we're not gonna do anything like that. We're gonna limit certain bands. We only want two meter and 70 centimeters because that's what our radio is capable of. Gonna click okay. Uh, limit modes, We this doesn't matter for us. Actually, I lied. Let's just do FM because that's all that we're capable of doing here. And we wanna make sure only open repeaters. We don't want private repeaters. And we're gonna click OK. At this point, the radio is gonna go and find everything out there in our area or in your area that is a valid open repeater. Now, the good thing about it is it does it for you. The bad thing about it, the system doesn't truly know what's valid, what's not. That's something that you can test and I'll show you how to test that shortly. Uh, at this point, let's take all these repeaters. We're gonna press the first one. We're gonna hold the shift button and we're gonna press the last one. We're gonna do control C to copy. 
we're going to go back to our primary Beofang UV5R installation here. We're going to get the last line right here before or after everything, all the GMRS frequencies. We're going to do Control-V to paste. Now we have all of these frequencies here. Cool. So now all of your frequencies are ready. Let's go into settings, see what's going on here. Everything looks good. Typically, everything that's stock is you know, pretty good. The one thing I want to turn off is beep. It's off for me. Recommend that you turn it off also because it's extremely, extremely annoying. Mm -hmm. um, everything else looks great. Before we send it over to our radio, what we want to do, oops, what we want to do is save this. Over here, UV5R, we have today's date. We're going to save this image just in case we ever need to alter it. Then you click radio, upload to radio, UV5R, this is the COM port, click OK, click OK. And now it is cloning. You can see little green lights on your radio. Once it is done, we can test out the radio, make sure that everything looks good and I'll show you how to do that. Okay, our radio is now rebooted and we can unplug this, turn the volume up a little bit and you wanna make sure that you are in memory mode. So to go back and forth between memory mode and frequency mode, you just click this button here. So I see WX1PA7, that is a weather station. And here we have our, it's very static, it's very static inside, but we have our weather. And at this point, your radio is now programmed. Uh, you can go and have it with you, keep it in your car, in your purse, wherever it is. And as you're driving around or you have a minute, go and scan through the repeaters, the channels that you have open, see if anybody's talking to them. If you hear somebody talking to them, remember that channel or write it down because that is something that you can go and revert to in the event of an emergency. Now, I very often talk about how these are great in an emergency, but similar to a weapon or a gun that you have for self-protection, you never want to use it for the first time when you desperately need it. In the same way, radios should not be used for the first time when you need them. That is why we have licenses. That is why I have a ton of them. It's because I never want to be caught with my pants down, uh, meaning that I never want to need this piece of equipment and not need to and not know how to use it. That would be detrimental to me and the safety of my family. So I highly recommend that you get licensed to transmit on amateur radio and take advantage of the beauty of self-reliant communication where you don't need an infrastructure behind you. If you have any questions, please feel free to ask them. I'd love to answer any of your questions. Uh, next week, we will be making a battery power bank. Uh, this is uh, powerful enough to charge your laptop, to charge your iPhones, your Android phones for a very, very long time. There is a battery in here and uh, it's going to be a lot of fun. So if you like this type of stuff, please consider subscribing. Have an awesome night or day. Take care. Bye.